This video will show how to uh, change a setup in an existing S120 drive system. Uh, many of these are the same in the other drive models, but a couple differences here in the S120. First thing is, uh, I'm going to assume that we don't have a project already, and that we're just walking up to a drive. So I'm going to make a new project. Now I need to find the drive. Remember, this is an example that we don't really know anything about it. We're just going to plug into the Ethernet and try to uh, figure out what's going on. Okay, so I did an accessible node, and there's a drive. I just have a generic name, but hopefully in the system you have, they've named it. Something that makes sense. All right, so it brought over the, uh, the drive. Now, this is just really the the outline of the drive, no parameters yet. But it quickly, that's the quickest way to go ahead and pop it over there. Now I'm going to go online because I want to make sure I upload to the PG, which is your computer. PG is a PC. Um, and I'm going to load all the parameters because I want to back up everything before I start messing with the settings. And normally I'd also save this as like some other file once I've uploaded it so that I know mess up the original upload for backup. So now I'm going to go to the drive, which will be under the, uh, uh, the main heading there. So I just fan it out by hitting the plus. Um, then I want to go to the uh, drive itself which will be under drives. Okay, so that's important to know that it shows the control unit kind of separate from the power section drive. Uh, this is particular to the S120 or the, uh, the DC drives are set up this way. Now I'm gonna tell it I wanna configure. Um, in this case, I'm going to show, hey, I'm going to, I want to set this thing up as encoderless. Uh, so you change this to whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to show encoderless with speed and uh, vector control. Now, these settings are already set for what I have. I have actually a special double uh, access module, so that's why it's shown as that. But I only have one connector connected connector one, so I don't really have one motor, and you, you'll only see one connector for most drives. Uh, these are settings that have been set previously, and they stay unless you change them. Now, this is a special demo. It's actually a 300 volt setup, which is kind of custom, uh, so it's a little irritated at me about that, so it's going to make me change it here. Uh, and then behind the scenes, I'll have to change it back, but to show you how it would look as a standard. I have just a regular old induction motor, and I'm just going to put in the data. If you select standard motor from list, that's for Siemens motors, where you can put the part number in. Um, but uh, I don't have a Siemens motor for this example, just a generic motor. There's a data uh, that I've already put in. Again, everything stays unless you change it. So it's off the nameplate. Uh, this motor's actually been tuned once before, so it, it's filled all these in. You don't have to worry about it. You just say your calculation, because we're gonna tune this thing in the end. I don't have a brake. If I had an encoder previously, it would show up here, so I make sure I unclick that encoder. So I don't want to try to find one and looking for it and giving me a fault. Now, if I wanted it to be some different uh, dynamic performance, I can change it here. Um, I'm not going to do a, a motor uh, identification. When I close this out, I'm going to do it manually. So 
that's a tune. Identification is that their word for tuning. So I'm just going to say no. And these are all settings that were already there. And it shows you everything that you changed in the settings. So you can review that. finished. Now this is a offline file, right? So this is saved on my computer. Now if I hit that little yellow, that's supposed to be like a network button, I could go online. Now that I'm online, what I see is what's in the drive. Not necessarily what I just put into that saved file on my computer. So try to keep the two straight. Now if I say download, it's going to download that offline file that I just edited to the drive. And normally you would say, yeah, ran the ROM. Uh, I'm going to do that after the fact. Basically, if you don't do the ram the ROM and you power cycle a drive, it resets the parameters that you just changed. Which can have an advantage if you're just playing around to see if it works. Uh, and you like everything, then you can do a manual RAM to ROM, which I will do, and everything's good. If things just go crazy, don't do the RAM to ROM, and power cycle it, and all your changes go away, and it's back the way it was before you started uh, changing stuff. Now I'm going to have a, an alarm that's it's irritated about that whole 300 volt thing for my custom setup, but uh, if you double click any alarms you get or um, faults, it'll actually bring up the help. Um, and then you can get more information on that fault without having to go to the manual. Uh, of course, there's help in the manual built into the, into the software. And here it's basically saying that um, I have an illegal value. And it would normally be illegal, but that's okay. You know, I, I know about that, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and rectify that. Now, um, we've changed the uh, settings for the drive. Now we have to uh, remove the encoder. Uh, that I put in here just to show, you know, when you're changing stuff around, uh, if you're removing like an encoder device, or in this case, uh, an encoder module, it has to match the offline file project settings have to match the actual. You can see here they don't because I have this encoder thing I just threw in there. Well, you're, you're going to get faults and alarms. It's going to be unhappy because the topology which is those drive click ethernet looking cables don't line up um, and to make it happy they have to be exactly the same they have to be plugged into the exact same ports and the devices you say are plugged in have to be there so I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and get rid of this because it doesn't actually exist I just stuck it in there to show how they get rid of it. And now I pulled it out of the, the topology and put it down. This is like a little place to keep it. Uh, if you wanted to put it in some on another port. Um, now I, I got it over in the hardware tree, so I got to remove it out of there because it doesn't exist. And I don't want it to pop up at some inconvenient time when I'm trying to program. So you can see now it's gone. Now this is going to line up with the actual online topology. So save it. You can see they they line up. Right? So that's going to make that happy. Now I'm going to download the again that offline file that I was just editing 
down to the uh, drive itself. And I'm going to do the RAM for ROM uh, at a later point. So now the topology matches. I've set it up for the um, how I want the motor. Now what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and uh, tune it because if it was tuned for another mode, you know, with an encoder, you know, it just folds for her to some different mode. The tuning will not be uh, optimized for the way it's the uh, system is now. So I'm going to say first go ahead and activate the calculations. It just calculates. It doesn't run anything and it happens as soon as you hit the act uh, activate measurement. So it's done. And the next tunes I got to fire the drive up. So I hit next and it's going to be the stationary. The stationary it's going to run some current through the motor. It won't it may jiggle but it won't actually spin activate that. Now I got to take control of the drive. And make sure you click these two little buttons so you can see everything. Uh, I don't know why they're not, often they're not on by default when you have a new installation. Uh, I don't know why. I'm going to assume uh, control. So it's warning me that, you know, we're going to be spinning it, we're taking control of this thing. And now I'm going to enable all the uh, enables, which you have to do when we're running it manually here. Now that bypasses any interlocks or any, you know, safeties that you may have. So if there's something that has to run before this motor spins, uh, make sure you have that taken care of. I hit the drive on. It starts its tune. And then in the little status, it actually tells you all the details of what it's part of its tune it's actually running at that point um, not really important unless it fails a tune and you can take note uh, at what point it bombed out on you okay because there's no measurement there's no faults or alarms that'll be flashing there if it is but there are none so that was successful then go to the next so we're we're in codeless operation, so I want to do this tune. Now I've activated it, it's ready to go. You have to hit start again. Once again, it will start telling you the details of what's happening. Uh, you can see the speed, uh, it's actually spinning the motor and uh, it's running through its tuning characteristics. Now, if this had an encoder, there's a, a fourth tune that you can go up there and hit next and select. But this is the last tune for open loop vector motors. Depending on the size of the motor, the bigger the motor, usually the longer this tune takes. So, this is a, a little bitty motor, so it goes through it pretty quickly. Alright, so it completed. Again, no alarms, no faults, and we're good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and give up control. That gives us control back to the uh, PLC. And you can only do this if the PLC is not actually running the motor. It won't switch control otherwise. So now, I like everything, so I'm going to go up here to target device. Say ran the ROM. Now it's going to permanently write everything into the EEPROM of the drive. It actually saves it on that card as well. Alrighty. So now it tells me, hey, it'll make a backup copy on the memory card next power cycle. Um, so that's just typical. You can you don't actually have to cycle power right now, but it will back it up the next time it's power cycled for you. 
Now, uh, you may want to just test your motor now that you've tuned it. You just want to run it by itself. You just go to the decommissioning control panel. Same place we kind of were for the uh, stationary tuning and measurements. Uh, I'll get this to come up here. There we go. So we're going to do the same thing, except for now, we're going to be able to just manually give it a speed and tell it to run once we do the enables. And again, it will make sure there's personnel safety and that if there's a lube pump or something that has to be turned on, make sure that's running before you do this. So I'm just going to say, hey, run at 300 RPM. And it ramps up to 300 RPM. It gives you the frequency, the current it's pulling, uh, the torque uh, that it's pulling. So it's a good way to quickly check uh, if everything's good. And then you just stop it. And uh, give up control, and again the PLC will, or switches or whatever you have running it will be back into control. And that's it. Thank you very much.